Hi, this discussion is all gonna be about locating percentiles under the normal curve. The best way to start this discussion is to recap some of the concepts on how to derive the z-scores. And this equation seems familiar. To get the z-scores, we need our raw score, we subtract the mean of the distribution where it belongs, and divide that difference by the standard deviation. And we ultimately get the z-score. Now our z-scores represents the number of standard deviations the raw score is away from the mean. If we have a z-score of 2 and a standard deviation of 10, then a raw score corresponding to that z-score is 2 times 10 units away from the mean. Another property of the z-score that is important is its ability to scale down large ranges of value. Above is a number line of the raw scores represented by the dots where its mean is equal to 47.46 and a standard deviation equal to 6.02. By converting it to z-scores, we see that those values are compressed in a small region where the mean is 0 and a standard deviation is 1. If you have a raw value of 59.51, which is selected such that its distance from the mean is exactly two times the standard deviation. This is going to correspond to a z value or z square equal to two. This is because of the two times factor which is multiplied to the standard deviation of the raw values. With this in mind, we can visualize our raw score in this column of the previous values. By converting them to z-scores, we can fit them more appropriately to the scale used by the standard normal distribution. Now we're done with the z-scores. Let's move on to our main topic, which is the percentiles. Now what are percentiles? We can best visualize percentiles by imagining a certain group of people having different heights. In this case, we have 40 people with increasing height from the first person to the last person. We can pick a certain person, which in this case is the 26th person. And by learning about all of the heights of these people, we can find that 64% of this population has a height less than the 26th person. What does this imply? In relation to our topic, we can say that the 64th percentile of this population is the height of the 26th person. We can utilize this concept on our proceeding discussion by figuring out what does the percentile look like in the z-distribution or also known as standard normal distribution. We can see that by relating it to our previous topics. Our percentiles can be represented as regions of areas or area under the standard normal curve. In this case, if half of the area shaded it represents an area of 0.5 or 50%. In this case, we have z equal to 0 on the center. And this z value right here is gonna represent our 50th percentile. This is because z equal to 0 marks 50% of the total area under the normal curve starting from negative infinity. To it. Now moving on to the 96th percentile there, we can find what is the value of z by drawing that area in the normal curve. And we'll see that this area is greater than half of the normal curve or 0.96 in this case. It corresponds to another z value bounded of 1.75. z equal to 175 therefore marks the boundary 
for the 96th percentile. Now, we might ask how to find the percentiles under the normal curve. So first, we're gonna draw that area corresponding to the percentile as we did earlier and find the z-score boundary of the said area starting from the left tail to the certain z-value that is supposed to be the boundary of our percentile region. To further discuss this, we have three examples to discuss in the following scenes. First is a case where the percentile is less than the 50th. Second is a case where our percentile is more than 50. And we're also going to discuss how to interpolate between percentiles. Starting our discussion with the first case where our percentile is greater than 50. In this case, the 84th percentile. We start by drawing this region on the standard normal distribution. You can see that the area is greater than half. So, what we're going to do is since we got this area of 0.84, we subtract 0.5 to it and we're left with 0.34. The next step is to look for the nearest neighbor of 0.34 on the values on the z-table. In this case, we have this blue surrounding rectangle and red surrounding rectangle as the closest neighbor of 0.34. To find the closest neighbor, we subtract each of the value from 0.34 and take their, their absolute values. And we are seeing that 0.3389 is closer to 0.34 with a distance of only 0.0011. By having this in mind, the next thing we're gonna do is to select or to find the z value corresponding to that area, which in this case is equals to 0.9 plus 0.09 or just equal to 0 0.99. This z value therefore marks our 84th percentile. Moving on to our next example, we're going to look for percentiles less than the 50th. Or in this case, we're going to look for the 25th percentile. We can start again by plotting this region under the normal curve and as you can see it occupies less than half of the total area below and we can solve for this percentile by subtracting that area from 0 0.5 and we're left with 0 0.25 also and again we select the closest neighbors to it which is represented by the blue and red rounding rectangles. To select the final value, we then again subtract each of those selected neighbors from 0 0.25 and take the absolute value and record the differences. And we can see that 0 0.2486 is closer to 0 0.25 with a distance of 0 0.00. One four. Therefore, we select that neighbor of 0 0.25. The next step, the same with the previous, is to select the corresponding z value to the said area, which in this case is equal to 0 0.6 plus 0 0.07 or equal to 0 0.67. A z value, therefore, of negative 0 0.67 marks the 25th percentile. Notice that we've been using the negative value in this case because this percentile is less than half of the number curve. Another special example is the 94th percentile. In this case, we are gonna be utilizing a method called interpolation. The 94th percentile is plotted 
with the area of 0 0.94. Since this is greater than 0 0.5, we subtract 0 0.5 from it, and we are left with a value of 0 0.44. The same with the previous problems, we're going to look for the closest neighbor of 0 0.44 on the Z table. And we find that the closest neighbors are marked with the surrounding rectangles in blue and in red. From the two, we are going to select the final closest value by subtracting each of those values to 0 0.44, taking the absolute value and look at their distances. But as we can see, the two values have the same distances from 0 0.44. With this equidistance, we cannot directly choose which value are we going to utilize for our final z-score or z-value. In this case, we're going to employ interpolation, which we're going to select the two corresponding z-scores and average them in order to find the final value. In this case, we have on the first is equals to 0 0.05 plus 1.5 plus 1.55. The same with the other, which is equal to 1.56. We average those two values, 1.55 and 1.56, and we arrive at the final value of 1.555. Therefore, z equal to 1.555 marks our 94th percentile. But since these values are known to be fixed in all percentiles under the standard normal distribution, we can list all of them into a table. And as you can see, this table materializes that thought, where, for example, the first percentile corresponds to a z-value of negative 2.33. And as we progress, through the percentiles, we can see that this value increases and also the sign changes as we cross the 50th percentile. This is an easy tool to quickly find the value of the percentiles under the normal curve. To further apply this theory, we can solve a problem using it. In a certain class, they got their results in their final exam in statistics and probability. Their scores have the following parameters. The mean is 35 and the standard deviation equal to 10. It is known that 60% of the class fell below a certain score. And we want to know what is that score. The next problem is if a certain student named Bill scored 47 in this exam, what is the percent of the class that scored less than him? Below, we list all of the given parameters. And our problem is to find the z-score and then the raw score equivalent to that z-score, which corresponds to the 60% of the class which in this case is the 60th percentile surrounded in blue, corresponding to a z-score of 0 0.25. Now that we have our z-score, and we also have our mean and standard deviation, we can use the previous given formula for our z-score. And instead of finding the z-score, we can plug in the given values and find our raw score, which we are looking for on the first question. And ultimately, we arrive at the value of our score at x is equals to 37.5. And our first question is answered right here. The next thing we're going to look for is the percentage of the class that scored less than B, which is 47. What we do is to convert these row scores, which in this case is equal to 47, to its equivalent z-score. Using the previous formula, 
we can see that 47 minus the mean over standard deviation is equal to 1.2. And the next step is to look for 1.2 on the Z table. And 1.2 corresponds to 1.2 plus 0 0.00 and we arrive at an area or a value of 0 0.3849. But this value is just the region in between 0 and 1.2. What we are looking for is z less than 1.2, which is 0 0.5 plus the previous answer equal to 8849 or 88.49%. In conclusion, 60% of the class scored below the raw score we solved earlier equal to 37.5. The 60th percentile therefore of this row scores is 37.5. The scores at the 60th percentile or the z-score is equal to 0.25 and 88.49% scored less than Bill on second question therefore making Bill score the 88th percentile. Now that we are done with our discussions, we can recall some of the concepts we've learned. First thing we've discussed is that the z-scores are just the standard units away from the mean of our row scores. We've also found out that the nth percentile is the value where n% percent of the population falls below. We've also learned that the nth percentile covers n% percent of the normal curves area starting from negative infinity. We've known that subtracting 0.5 is necessary for percentiles that are more than the 50th. And we've also found out that the z-values representing a percentile less than 50 is always a negative value. And lastly, we've learned that the z-value representing the 50th percentile is 0. Thank you for listening.